Welcome to day four of your fast. If you're like me, as much as you love fasting, you'll be glad to eat again soon. I want to talk to you today about the sword and the spirit. In Ephesians 6:17, Paul said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, let me set some context for you. Paul was being held prisoner for two years um, before his trial uh, with Nero, Praetorian guard. So at least twice a day, the guards would be changed. So for two years, he had hundreds of Praetorian guards around him. Uh, they were the elite Roman soldiers. And one day, I guess as he was looking at them, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit began to inspire him and said this, the very armor you see on those men is a metaphor for spiritual warfare. And of course, he writes Ephesians and he talks about the gladius, which was the short Roman sword that they adopted out of Spain, about you know, 24 to 30 something inches long. They rarely slash with it, they stab with it. Now they said the word of God is just like that. Now the word used for word there is not logos, it's rhema. It means the spoken word of God, the word that's spoken out. So what is Paul saying? The word of God, when you speak it out under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, has power to cut into the enemy, has power when you find yourself in spiritual warfare, has power when you feel you're being attacked by your enemy, the devil. Now, let me give you an example of that. When Jesus is battling with uh, Satan in the wilderness, you know, here's what the devil says. If you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus says this. The Bible says, quoting Deuteronomy, a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, in the Greek Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament, when you look in Deuteronomy 8, you find the very word used for word is rhema. What is Jesus doing? He is taking a word, he's taking scripture as inspired by the Holy Spirit, and he's using it to pierce the attack of the enemy. He's using it to pierce through. Now, many of you are thinking, well, I feel oppressed sometimes, I feel cast down. How do I know when the enemy is attacking me? Now, here is what I found. There are typically three signs of that. Intensity, density, and immensity. What do I mean by intensity? Have you ever been in a situation, maybe you, like me, you're a parent of many children, and your children keep getting sick and you finally think, they've never been sick this long. It's never lasted this long. I can't figure it out. Many times, if things don't make natural sense, it may not be natural. There's a very real devil that attacks us. So intensity level. Second, density level. You ever just been stuck? Feel like no matter what you do, you're walking through quicksand, you're walking through fog. No matter how hard you push, it won't move. A lot of times that's a sign that it's not just natural. You're not just tired. You're not just discouraged. You're being resisted by the enemy. Then there's immensity. I find with spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare has a tendency to minimize our master Jesus and to maximize the monsters and the problems we're facing. Spiritual warfare normally presents in two ways, as a wall and a wave. Ever feel like you're just walled off from God? You feel like you're in a steel case, you can't hear him no matter what you do, can't see him, can't find him? A lot of times that's a mark of spiritual warfare. Other times it's just like a wave. Maybe you walk into a room and you're just hit with a wave of depression, hit with a wave of fear. You go, that makes no sense. A lot of times that's spiritual. Now here is what I find. When I face spiritual warfare, I back up. Many times I worship quietly in tongues or just to worship. And I ask God to give me the scripture I need to combat this. Let's say I'm facing a depression. I'm just discouraged. I'm heartbroken. I might use something out of Isaiah where Jesus says, I've given you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And all of a sudden, I'll just begin to speak. Right now, in Jesus' name, I take the garment of praise. I don't have to be heavy-spirited. I'll begin to praise. Let's say I'm just afraid, and I'm just bound by fear. And all of a sudden, that scripture comes to me. Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I'll just begin to speak that. Fear not, little flock. Fear not, little flock. And here's what I found is I thrust into the darkness of what I'm facing with the Word of God 
things begin to change. It cuts through the darkness. Now let me give you a very simple exercise and you'll find it on page 21 of your guide if you're using the paper and if you're online, you'll see it there as well. Let's say you're facing depression today. Let's say you're facing fear today. Maybe there's some stronghold in your mind. I want you to find a scripture that corresponds to it. And when you do, I want you to begin to speak that scripture. I want you to begin to speak that scripture into what you're facing or what your nation is facing. Maybe you say, my nation's in chaos today, Jim. Well, you can take that scripture. All the kingdoms of the earth will have the kingdoms of our God. And as you speak scripture, as the Holy Spirit inspires you, you're going to find fresh faith coming to you today. Let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, I thank you that the word of God is our greatest weapon against that which we fear. And I'm praying no matter what we're facing, no matter how oppressed we feel, no matter how intense things are around us, Lord, many of our precious brothers and sisters today in every nation are in nations in chaos. They're facing painful things. And I'm praying, Holy Spirit, as we pray for different regions of the world today, as we pray over our churches, that you would meet us, that you would help us, that you would inspire us, that you would touch us. In Jesus' name, we thank you that you anoint your word, Lord. Amen.